Okay, so um, we're going to look at two more examples of tomos. And uh, both of these are actually um, based on released exam questions. And so kind of gives you an idea, um, at least <laughs> normally, if this weren't such a crazy year this year, um, what it would look like. So, um, you know, certainly it could look something like this as well this year um, on, on this year's AP exam if they choose to, to you know, focus on Taylor polynomials. Um, the one thing we don't have to worry about is any kind of error uh, in terms of, um, you know, Lagrange or in terms of alternating series, but um, an approximation, absolutely. Okay. Um, now, this particular example, they don't tell us any kind of function. They don't let us use known functions like e to the x or cosine x or, you know, things like that to, to try to manipulate it. We actually have to build it based on the definition. And they're calling it a Taylor polynomial centered at zero which we know could also could have been called as a McLaurin polynomial. So make sure we know the, you know, those are the same. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm going to just start off with uh, my definition of, uh, of a Taylor polynomial. So it wants to, uh, uh, I think third degree. So call it P sub three would have been um, F of zero plus F prime of zero. Um, I'm just, Kind of amused that it's the eraser icon. Um, that's fun. Uh, over one factorial times x minus zero to the first power plus f double prime of zero times x minus zero squared over two factorial and then plus f triple prime of zero times x minus zero cubed or three factorial. Again, the minus zeros aren't really necessary. Uh, I just like to put that there, though, to show you the structure of this particular, um, you know, uh, of our formula. Now, um, go back up and then to start inputting answers. Like f of zero, they tell you f of zero is five. So call this part A. So then p of three would equal five. Uh, the derivative at zero is negative three. So minus three times x. Uh, second derivative they give you is a one. So plus one half because of the two factorial times x squared. Um, and then the third derivative is four. So plus four over three factorial x cubed. Now, on the AP exam, you don't have to simplify an answer like this in terms of like realizing and expanding three factorial and reducing it like four over six, which is two thirds. You could leave it like that. Okay, and then the follow-up says use it to approximate f of point 2. And we just literally put point 2 into each of these x's. So then um, f of point 2 would approximately equal 5 minus 3 times point 2 plus 1 half times point 2 squared plus um I'll just go ahead and reduce that two thirds, uh, 0.2 cubed. And you will have an ex uh, a calculator, um, you know, for this year's exam. So then you would just type that in, or you could leave it like this. Um, the question writers have let us know that the exam can be taken without a calculator. Um, so, I mean, I don't think they would want you to brute you know, hand this. So they, they, I would just leave it if you didn't have a calculator. Otherwise, if you did have a calculator, um, make sure you give at least three decimals of accuracy. But this one works out to actually um, a repeating decimal. So you could actually leave it an exact answer. 4.425 with the three repeating. But if you just said 4.425, you'd be fine. Okay, so then part B says I'll write a fourth degree Taylor polynomial about uh, x equals zero. So again, McLaurin, but g of x is really f of x squared. And so uh, a couple things just to notice, well, like in, in maybe you saw fourth degree, uh, fourth degree, that's going to tell you that you would need an x to the fourth power. And you don't have a fourth derivative, um, uh, you know, of f. But that's okay, because it's not f, it's f of x squared. So when we start evaluating this, um, you know, like if you if you take a look at all of what this is, um, like your function is now a manipulation since it's centered at zero, it's a manipulation of x squared. So wherever there was an x, I'll highlight these here, wherever there was an x, oops, there we go, um, here, here, 
here, like all of those are going to be now become x squared. And so when you look at the exponent out here, that one, well, I'll keep it as an x, but all of a sudden, if you have that x squared and you're squaring it, there's your x to the fourth. And this would have been x squared cubed, that's x to the sixth, so we don't even need that term. So that's it's good to realize that you didn't necessarily have enough terms, but then since it's in terms of x squared, it doesn't matter because all we needed to go is related to that, that second uh, the x squared power. So part b, g of x, which is equal to f of x squared centered at zero. So that would be um, f of zero squared. So it's still going to be f of zero squared. But I'll just write that plus um, uh, f prime of zero squared. And then this time it's going to be x squared. And again, it's going to be minus zero to the first power plus f double prime of zero squared times x squared minus zero uh, squared, my bad, over two factorial. And that's it. I don't need to go any further. Um, and so then I know what f like zero squared is zero. So f of zero, we still knew was five. F prime of zero squared, which is F prime of one, is still negative three, so minus three X squared. Uh, and then F double prime of zero squared, which is F double prime of zero, which is one over two factorial, so plus one half X to the fourth. Okay. Now, in hindsight, I probably could have even got there quicker. Um, call that polynomial P sub four, uh, because uh, I'm looking at my previous answer. Uh, which is right up here. And if I would have put that x as x squared and this x squared as x to the fourth, I would have got the same answer. And again, it's because we're centered at zero, we can make such an easy trans, um, like, you know, easy uh, substitution. Okay, so now it says write the third degree polynomial, Taylor polynomial uh, for h of x, which is based on an integral about x equals zero. Um, and so, you know, I, I might think about, well, here I have my function, um, you know, just my normal function centered at zero. So if I integrate that particular function, um, I just need to make sure I have enough terms to get to x cubed. So I'm kind of thinking ahead, kind of planning this. Um, you know, the, the, the fact that I have um, this 5 will become like a 5x, and x become x squared, and x squared becomes x cubed. So technically, I only have to integrate up to that much, because if I would have continued, my, my power raising x cubed would become x to the fourth, and I don't need that many terms. So I'm just going to focus on those first three terms. So for part C, um, in order to uh, find h of x as a third degree poly Taylor polynomial uh, centered at zero. So um, I'm going to integrate from zero to x uh, of f of t dt. And so then I'm going to think about that's going to be the integral from zero to x of five minus three t um, plus one half t squared dt. And notice that this is in terms of t because this was in terms of t. So, but when I integrate it and substitute, I'll get x values. Um, so then that equals 5t um, minus 3 over 2t squared um, plus 1 uh, half t cubed over three when evaluated from zero to x. And then when we put in our x's um, and then take away the zeros doing the fundamental theorem of calculus, you would get five x minus three halves x squared plus one sixth x cubed. Um, and then we could just leave that like there. So there's our h of x function. Very nice. Okay, um, and I think there's one more part to that one, part D. Um, oh yeah, it says, uh, you know, given, um, you know, given that f of one equals three, uh, find the exact value of h of one or explain why um, it cannot be determined. Okay, well, the thing is, is that, um, you know, if, if you are looking at um, uh, trying to find uh, h of one, 
Um, okay. Um, uh, like the, you have to remember that these are just approximations. Um, sorry, I was, I was momentarily distracted. Um, so, re so, so remember that like, um, we don't know what the function f is. Like it doesn't tell us what f of, like the, the value f is. And so, um, if, if I'm thinking about h, and h is based on this particular um, equation here, and and I integrated just a portion of our approximation. Remember, if like if we think about the whole Taylor series, if we had an infinite number of terms, we would know all those terms and we could get an exact answer. But remember, we only know three terms. We only know four terms. So if if I'm trying to evaluate, um, you know, h of one, and h is based on an the integral of f, not all of f, just a portion of f, just the first three terms of f, then we will not find an exact value. We would only be finding an approximation of that. So um, however you want to write that, explain that, type that. Again, this year's format is a little bit different on the AP exam, but that's what they're wanting to, you to, to realize, that the, the Taylor polynomial, if you go way back to f, um, we don't know the entire function. We know just a snippet of it. And so it's just like a finite number of terms. Okay, so, um, you know, it's up to you for this next example. If you want to pause the video and see if you can solve it or um, just follow along as I as I work through this, um, it kind of is very, very similar that they they may not tell you the whole function. But in this case, they gave us the, the fourth degree Taylor polynomial. Now, this is a Taylor polynomial. It's not Maclaurin, um, and it's not centered at zero, obviously not Maclaurin. It's actually centered at four. And I know it's centered at four because of this x minus c, where c is equal to four. So I know this is centered at four. Okay. Now, part A is really testing your definition in terms of coefficients. Like, um, if you were to think about where did this P of X, if this was a true Taylor polynomial, if you think about that, it would have come from um, F of zero plus F prime of zero times X minus four over one factorial plus F double prime of, uh, not zero, I'm sorry, <laughs> four, since it's not centered, there, four, uh, f double prime of four times x minus four squared over two factorial uh, plus f triple prime of four x minus four cubed over three factorial plus f to the fourth power's derivative of four x minus four to the fourth power over four factorial. So that would have been the definition they would have used to actually say, hey, here it is, here's my function. So if you know that definition, then you know precisely f of four, right, which is here, is your first term. So your f of four is seven. So, so that's just testing again. I guess another way to test that definition of how do you create these Taylor polynomials. So for part A, f of four is equal to seven. Sorry, this is so messy. Now be very careful for f triple prime of four um, because don't automatically think it's negative two. It's a really common mistake. That negative two was a result of the value of the third derivative of four after you've divided it by six, uh, three factorial, which is six. So I know that negative two is equal to some number divided by three factorial, which is six. Oh, that mystery number must be then negative 12. So that would be the answer to F triple prime of four. Okay, uh, next it says write the second degree Taylor polynomial for the derivative of x. And remember that what we have here, this Taylor polynomial is actually um, the, the Taylor polynomial of f of x. So I would need, I would need to take its derivative. Um, and notice it's still being centered at four. So the fact that these are in terms of like x minus four is sort of like my unit or my variable that's actually to my advantage. So let me go ahead and change colors here. So for part b, so um, f prime of x when centered at x equals four, uh, yes, centered at four. So then I just start taking the derivative. Well, the derivative of seven is zero minus three times x minus four to the zero power, because um, the one came down. Um, and then I could say plus two times five 
times x minus 4 to the first power. Technically, chain rule times 1 doesn't really do anything. Um, and then minus 2 times 3 times x minus 4 squared times 1. Or that would be negative 3 times x minus 4. And please just leave it uh, like this. Don't have to do any more simplifying. Plus 10 times, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> leave it, yeah, leave it, but make sure you leave it correct. <laughs> I was like, wait, why do I have two terms that are both x minus 4? Because this one's not. Uh, minus 3 plus 10 times x minus 4 uh, minus 6 times x minus 4 squared. Okay, so there, there's our um, derivative as a Taylor polynomial, second degree, because the highest power is squared, even though there would be th like more than two terms, there'd be three terms if you simplified it. And then this is, you know, approximate the derivative of 4.3. So just like the last one, you were going to put in um, 4.3 in each of the positions where x was. So 4.3 there and a 4.3 there. So then um, go back to my pen. You could you could either write it, type it. Um, so then f prime of 4.3 is approximately equal to negative 3 plus 10 times 4.3 minus 4, which is 0.3, minus 6 times 4.3 minus 4, 0.3 squared. Um, and so when you do that, I th um, you should get uh, negative 0.54. And if it were not an exact answer, then you want to make sure you give at least three decimal places of accuracy. Okay, now going the reverse, writing in a fourth degree polynomial um, for uh, h of x. And I think what I forgot to say is it needs to still be centered at x minus, at, sorry, at x equals 4. So I forgot to say centered at x equals 4. Um, so that is a typo. I'll have to fix that for, for next year. Um, so otherwise, um, you know, we'd have a lot more work to do. So centered at x equals 4 is the center. Okay. So um, having said that, then we are going to take what we had to start with and anticipating a fourth degree, which means we really only need to go out to the third power because then when I raise that a power, it'll actually become the fourth degree. So let me get some more space here. Oh, maybe not. Oh, I guess not. Um, usually I can have that screen there. Oh, well, uh, plan B, new page. So, um, so again, thinking about, um, I'm going to be integrating um, from, so here's my h of x. Oops, h of x from 4 to x, um, and it's going to, uh, to be of f of t dt. So then we have the integral from 4 to x of 7 minus 3 times t minus 4, since I technically in terms of t to the first power, plus 5 times t minus 4 squared, and then minus 2 times uh, t minus 4 cubed. Okay, and so then when I integrate, so that becomes 7 uh, in terms of t, right? So 7t minus 3 over 2t minus 4 squared plus 5 uh, over 3 um, times t minus 4 cubed minus 2 over 4 times t minus 4 to the fourth power uh, when evaluated from 4 to x. So this will be my function h of x. And so then when I put in the x, all of the x's become, um, sorry, all the t's become x's. And then when I put in my 4, um, you know, to, to figure out uh, what that value is, um, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to get, I th well, let's find out. So, so we get um, 7x minus 3 over 2 times x minus 4 squared plus um, 5 thirds times x minus 4 cubed uh, minus 2 fourths, which is 1 half, x minus 4 
to the fourth power, so that's your f of b minus f of a. So then when I start putting 4 into each of these, well, when I put 4 into this, 4 minus 4 is 0, so that goes away. 4 minus 4 is 0, so that goes away. 4 minus 4 is 0, so that goes away. So I'm just picking up uh, 4 times 7, which is equal to uh, 28. Okay, um, and so then I can leave it like this, not a, not, a, not a problem at all, but it does say once it's centered at four. So I'm wondering if, and maybe you saw this, maybe you didn't, uh, I'm wondering if we combine maybe the seven X term and this 28, seven X minus 28 is the same thing as seven times X minus four. Um, and so that way I can 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 make sure that I, it is truly centered at four. Don't know if they necessarily take off because what we have is equivalent, um, but it just might be good measure to do that. X minus four squared plus five thirds times X minus four to the third power minus one half times X minus four to the fourth. Now I have no idea if there was another part to this question. Let's double check and see. Oh, maybe there you go. Go all the way down to the bottom. It took a little bit longer than I thought, but it's okay. Good problems. Nope, that's it. Part C. Okay. So, um, really good questions. And again, if they pick one of the two questions this year to be Taylor polynomials, um, you know, both of those would be great examples. I know how to do. Um, okay. So, let me know if you have any questions, and then um, you know, we'll just keep going from there.